So when the season started, I was in the mindset of not watching any isekai anime. And I think that's for obvious reasons. There's like 10 different isekai coming out this season, I think. Don't quote me on that. So I was just kind of expecting them all to be, well, to be frank, complete ass. Hey man, at least Kappa gives me a fair enough reason to drop a curse word every now and then in my videos. Either way, Overly Cautious Hero was completely off my radar until my brother started telling me to watch it. Granted, I love my brother to death, but usually his predictions on what makes good anime aren't super accurate, if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, and he watches my videos, so. This is going to be an awkward conversation later. Nevertheless, I decided to give Overly Cautious Hero a try, and, well, what it ended up becoming is probably one of the most creative isekai in anime. And I'm not just saying that because they put some unique twists on the show. No, they actually did go out of their way to change some of the base tropes that have ruled over the isekai genre for the past couple of years, and today, I really want to talk about it. So let us talk about the overly cautious hero. So first, a quick synopsis of the show. The anime follows Ristarte, Rist Ristare? I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue how to pronounce her name, so let's just call her Goddess, because that's exactly what she is. She is a goddess of healing, living in a dimension of gods. In their dimension, it's the responsibility of the gods and goddesses to summon heroes, typically from Earth, and then send them to different worlds ruled by demon lords and overthrow them. Goddess puts up a bit of a front, but she basically has the same personality of Aqua from Konosuba. Nevertheless, she's a bit of a rookie when it comes to overthrowing demon lords, and she manages to land an S-class demon lord which, by the way, is considered extremely hard for those of you who aren't gamers. So, nervously, she runs through all of the potential heroes she can choose from and finds someone with freakishly high stats. Knowing she needs someone tough, she summons Seiya, our overly cautious hero. This is where things take a drastic turn from normal isekai. First and most notable, Seiya isn't your typical generic-looking otaku. This dude is a ripped machine. Goddess immediately falls head over heels for him and we get our first taste of what's to come. When she's all excited and tells him to get ready to head out to the new world, he tells her no. Now that he can see his stats, he insists on training before ever heading to the other world. So he locks himself in a room and trains non-stop for two weeks to raise his level. Only when he believes that he is fully and completely prepared does Seiya finally have Goddess bring him to the new world. What's really different about this show is that it begins restructuring a lot of the classic isekai tropes. For instance, what happens to Seiya if he dies? If Seiya dies, he just gets returned back to Earth and he gets told that pretty early on. The only real motivation Seiya has is simply the guilt of letting a whole world die. Secondly is the show's separation between the goddesses universe and the world they are currently trying to save. With goddess, they are able to freely travel back and forth between these two dimensions. So naturally, our overly cautious hero abuses the hell out of it. Not only that, but we learn early on that time in the goddess realm passes significantly slower than the other world so they abuse that feature to train him. Oh yeah, and also in some other places, but that's getting near spoiler territory. This is a really creative technique, and it actually brings me back to Excel World, where the main character had both the real world and the game world at their disposal, and events that occurred in one often affected the other. I mean, hell, Excel World also had it so that time passed differently in the accelerated world versus the regular world as well, and that's one of the things that all of the characters abuse. It's really cool to see this older isekai trope, if you could even call it that, be applied to this anime. It's really creative and is used extensively to enhance the story. Hell, I'd almost say that they spend more time in the goddess realms than they do in the actual world they're supposed to be saving. Speaking of which, let's finally talk about the one trick in this show. I'm just calling it a one trick from now on because it seems like every isekai now is your classic isekai but with a smartphone or with your mom and so on and so forth. This show does in fact have its own one trick, 
And that's that our hero is overly cautious. I mean, who would have guessed? It's not like it's in the title or anything. My crappy jokes aside, thank you Kappa, this is actually a pretty fun one trick for an isekai to have. Seiya is always trying his best to get perfectly prepared, and it's always fun to see how despite the demons trying their best, they are always being outsmarted by him. It's pretty amazing how many levels of prepared he is, and when he doesn't know exactly how to beat whatever demon they are facing, off back to the goddess world they go for another training montage. Now of course, for most people who've only watched an episode or two of the show, you may think this kind of trope gets very repetitive. And I understand why you would assume that, however, it doesn't. To be frank, we learn quite quickly that if Seiya wasn't always this prepared, he would be dead. I mean, not dead, but just sent back to Earth because he died. Almost every time he fights a monster in this show, we almost always see his original plan fail. And even later on, quick spoiler alert, we see when all of his plans fail, and he has to rely on someone else. It lets us know that despite Seiya's ability to pull off ex machina after ex machina, sometimes the threats are just too big. It makes for some interesting drama and keeps us engaged because we don't always know when Seiya has a plan that's going to actually work. Cautious Hero is a very different kind of isekai. Now don't get me wrong, it still works with a lot of the base tropes that the isekai genre has been fixated on for the past couple of years, but it really does introduce some genuinely new concepts, not just one tricks. So if you're a fan of isekai but have gotten tired of these same repetitive tropes, then don't be cautious about giving Cautious Hero a try. I'm sorry, I had to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I made some major changes to my Patreon recently, so if you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description. Speaking of which, a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are my heroes. If you're interested in seeing how I edit, joining our exclusive Discord, or simply supporting the channel, feel free to join me on Patreon. Make sure you guys share, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Metamay Matt. Make sure you guys stay a man and go watch that goddamned anime.